It's coming up to the end of the month, so you know what time it is. Hiya, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantelle and on this channel we create all things art, ranging from like sketchbook sessions, art challenges and bullet journaling. April's theme was all about flowers and bright colours. But this month, we're gonna be doing something different. Relax, grab your art supplies, let's plan the next setup. The theme is witchcraft. Today we're using the water-based markers that I picked up in my most recent Timu haul. If you haven't seen that one, I'll pop it down below. It's a really fun one and I've also got a code if you'd like to get some yourself or if you're an artist, why not join the affiliate program through my code. On one end there's a brush marker and the other end is a fine liner. Honestly, I don't tend to use the other end very much with these pens. Even though it's harder to control a brush tip to try and get fine lines and different weights, I feel like you can learn a lot. It helps with your ability to control pressure when holding a pen or pencil, and it's the same reason why I tend to paint using just one or two paintbrushes. It means that if I'm only able to use one item, like during a challenge or when I'm drawing or painting outside and that's the only thing that I've got with me, I'm able to utilise that item and get enough control to be able to create different line whips and pressures. So for me this has been a really handy tip to limit the amount of art supplies that you use and try and make it a little bit harder for yourself because I think you learn more that way. I only really started doing this after the challenge I did last year where I drew a face every single day for one month. I'll leave that portrait challenge down below if you want to check it out. And one big thing that I learned from that challenge was that I often take the easy route. I set myself a few rules like limiting how long I was drawing for and only being able to use one pen or pencil. Creating with just one medium made me realise that I often grab a darker pencil or darker paint to add shadows rather than layering or just pressing down harder. I don't utilise what I already have. So after that challenge, I wanted to learn to make the most out of what I already have and use that item to the best of its ability. It's a habit that I developed and nowadays I automatically stick to a larger brush to try and make it as thin as possible. It's a good way to practice. I say the theme is witchcraft, it's broadly about witches, but in a cute way. And I must forewarn you, if you don't like maximalist and very extra journal pages, this one might not be for you. I don't really know how it happened, but it is the most extra bullet journal setup I've ever done. Like, there's no part of these pages that are left untouched. We're using the water-based markers, along with scrapbook papers, stickers, and washi tapes. The colour palette was supposed to be dark, I did talk about this in the previous setup, it was the plan, but honestly when it came to it, the notebook is B5. So that's a lot of area to cover. It kind of felt like a waste to use brand new markers just to fill a background. The brush tip is nowhere near as big as some of my paintbrushes and it would have taken ages to colour in all of the backgrounds and it really would have wasted the new markers so I decided to not do that. Instead, we're sticking in a lot of different papers and doing a lot of decoration to try and add colour. So honestly, there isn't much of a colour theme for this one, it's just super extra pages that are completely filled with everything. I picked out some darker paper and washies and then added the pink pens and went a little random by reaching for the glitter washi tape. It's chaotic. This is a chaotic setup and I don't know if I like it. I changed my mind a lot with this one, so I would love to know at the end whether you do actually like it or not. 
When it comes to the markers, they are water-based, which makes them a lot easier to grab and draw with than alcohol markers. I do actually have some alcohol markers now, though it is just a small set. Saying that, I did notice with these water-based markers that if I pressed down a lot with multiple layers, there was a little bit of bleed through. So far in this notebook, I've not had any bleed through. Even with the future colour markers that I used from Stationery Pal, there was no bleed through there. Typically, it's not something that you would expect with water-based markers, so that was a little bit surprising. It just meant I had to be a little bit more careful, but it was easily manageable. I would love to be able to use alcohol markers in this notebook, but I'm pretty certain they would go through the page, since alcohol markers go through virtually everything. The big difference between the two is that alcohol markers blend easily and you generally can't see the strokes, whereas the water markers have virtually no blending capabilities and the brush strokes are really easily seen so it does look a little bit patchy. You could add water because they are slightly water soluble, but honestly this requires a lot of practice to try and get right. I have used a water brush with these pens to see if they can be reactivated and they barely do. It just about smudges a little bit. I used a small pack of Manami water-based markers on the longest day last year for a challenge and they actually reactivated really well. They are quite juicy markers though, they have a lot of pigment and feel a little bit closer to paint. These Timu markers and the Tombow ones seem to have a higher water quantity, so they don't spread as far when used with water. So I think I'll mostly be using them as is. I have seen before here on YouTube, Katie Moody made a really interesting video on all the different ways that you could use water-based markers. I'll leave the video below if you're interested, it's really fascinating and honestly I haven't tried all the methods yet so there might be something else that works really well. It turns out there's actually a lot of different ways you can use them. When it comes to the weekly spreads, these ideas are probably my most inventive yet and I don't know how I came up with them but I'm pretty impressed to be honest. That being said, I didn't actually do them well, but the thought is there. You can tell there was an idea, it just wasn't executed well. The tree idea is very simple, but I like how it clashes with the previous pages, in that it's so simple and so minimalist, it really stands out compared to the other two, which are kind of crazy. Then for the next two weekly spreads, I had the idea to draw each day as a tarot card. I should have used a ruler. When it comes to pens, I'm scared to use a ruler because so many times before, I've removed the ruler before it's fully dried and the ink just spreads all over the page. So that's why I didn't use one and have never used one in any bullet journal setups this year. I mean, it has a cute hand-drawn kind of look to it, but all the cards are a different size, so there is that. One of the drawbacks of creating the weeklies like this is that each box is a lot smaller than usual. So depending on how this next month goes will depend on if I do this kind of thing in the future or if the boxes do need to be bigger in order for me to have the space for everything I need each day. I think that really changes so often though. Some days I'm really busy and some there's just one or two big tasks. So there's not a lot to write in there. You might be able to notice that I carefully didn't include a hand holding the tarot cards. And you'd be right. I didn't want to draw a hand. They're hard to get right, especially when only part of the hand is going to be on the page. Most of it is going to be off the page or behind the cards and that's kind of difficult to get right. I would like to spend time in the future working on developing my skills. And along with anatomy, I'd like to figure out how to consistently draw hands well. I had hoped to spend some time on this at the start of the year, but I've been a little bit busy with some exciting news. Me and my partner will be moving into our first home very soon, which means there's been a lot of decluttering and packing and cleaning, all exciting stuff, and I'm currently filming it for future vlogs, which I hope you'll join me for. 
Hopefully we should be able to move in in the next month. But that's why I wasn't able to dedicate any time to this. I'm still uploading every Thursday and Sunday. I was able to get ahead on filming the last few months, so we have enough videos filmed to get us to summer. After that, hopefully we can set up my very first art studio and a desk. I would love to finally have a desk. I've been sat on the floor by my windowsill for far too long. I get backache, my legs lose feeling, my arms lose feeling. It's really not working. And then there'll be some really exciting small business changes coming up, which means hopefully we'll be making some really interesting videos. I hope this year will be good. I hope it will be good for all of us. Okay, that was a slight sidetrack. This is my most random plan with me spread yet, but you know what, that snake is adorable. Even if everything else is kind of chaotic, the next month is going to be more organized and less messy. The theme for June is beach, and I am so excited for summer. I hope we get some nice weather again like last year. There's so much I would love to do, but living in the UK, the weather is a huge factor since most of the time it rains. I hope you've enjoyed seeing this crazy setup. We always end up taking a slight tangent in these videos, but I don't mind. I like having little topics we can talk about, and I hope you like this format too. You know what? I think this one might just be my favourite setup so far. What do you think? What's your favourite page? I hope you enjoyed joining me for a nice fun little art session and if you missed any of my previous bullet journal setups I will leave the playlist down below. Thank you so much for being here. It would mean so much if you could subscribe. I would love to see you in the next one. Have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.